Hi everyone, I'm Johan and I'm going to be talking about the Microsoft Engineering Manager interview process. At the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of the process itself, what interviewers look at and a bunch of tips for each round. Quick intro, I'm from Prepfully. This video has been put together by Microsoft Engineering Managers who are also interview coaches on Prepfully. They've coached hundreds of candidates through the process and can be booked directly on the website if you need more personalised guidance. Right then, moving on to the interview. The Microsoft EM interview has four rounds. First, the recruiter phone screen. Second, first round interviews with EMs. Third, the on-site interview. And fourth, the as-appropriate interview. Let's talk about step one first. This is the recruiter interview. It usually happens over the phone or online. It takes about 30 minutes and is primarily to access your professional background and confirm your eligibility for the job. I have three tips for this round. Number one, it often starts with the old favourite, so tell me about yourself. So it's useful to have a nice short intro ready to roll with. Number two, another common question is, why Microsoft? So make sure you have a clear reason for why you're applying at Microsoft as well as why you think you'd succeed there. And finally, number three, be super familiar with your past work. Make sure to have a project you can talk about from each of your past previous roles. Organise your thoughts in advance around topics like what your contribution was, how things went and what you learned. This brings us to round two, which involves one to two phone screens with your EMs. Your recruiter will let you know exactly how many you're in for. Microsoft tends to dig a bit more into behavioural questions, so that's what your first screen will typically be about. The second will be more technical in nature. I have two tips for this one. During the first screening, they'll be looking to assess your people management and leadership prowess. So think ahead and craft engaging narratives at the highlight instances, for instance, where you've led, mentored or guided teams to achieve meaningful outcomes. Make sure to emphasize how your leadership approach helped you drive positive results within your team. As for the second phone screen, questions will resolve around which system design and architecture, problem solving and your approach to technical leadership. So I'd suggest practicing designing scalable and fault tolerant systems for different scenarios like for instance, a distributed caching system for a high traffic e-commerce platform. When discussing previous technical projects, delve into the architectural decisions you made the challenges you overcame and the innovative solutions you implemented. Recall instances where you resolved critical technical issues and guided teams through technology transitions, etc. Go beyond the technical details and share how your decisions aligned with the broader project goals and contributed to the overall business success. Moving on to step three, the on-site interview. Once you're through the first rounds of interviews, you'll be called on site for four to six one-on-one -on -one interviews, which include a mix of system design, coding and behavioural rounds. Each round lasts 40 to 45 minutes and you'll face the team you'll potentially join as well as the senior executives. Let's dive into each round, starting with number one, system design. All right, so here's the deal with Microsoft interviews. Since their products have a crazy number of monthly users, they're all about scalability. That means you need to be prepared to tackle some high level system design questions. I have five tips for this round. First, system design questions aren't your typical tech questions with one perfect answer. Microsoft goes for more open-ended prompts and then typically tweaks the question based on your background. For instance, if you've dabbled in APIs, they might throw an API design question your way. So be on your toes. You should be game to design just about any product or system at a high level. Next, make sure you really understand the problem before diving into solutions. Clarifying, defining scope and explaining your approach is key. This lets the interviewer drive you in the direction they want. Which brings me to my third point. Keenly listen for feedback from your interviewer. They often drop hints about the topics they want to cover. For instance, phrases like, let's assume XYZ isn't a constraint, signal that it's time to shift to the next theme. If they ask specific questions such as, what if it has to be used extensively every day by a diverse user base globally? It may be a cue to explore scaling strategies like using CDNs. 
Now, coming up to my fourth point, come up with multiple ideas considering the given constraints. It's a positive approach and it's essential to succinctly present these ideas, explain trade-offs and then make a deliberate decision. Practice is key here, and seeking help from friends or using platforms like Prepfully, where Microsoft EM's mentor candidates can provide valuable insights. Finally, there might be instances where you find yourself stuck or unsure about the interviewer's expectations. Don't worry, it's completely normal. Just admit it rather than bluffing. Offer to explore through guesswork if needed. Alright then, moving on to the next round, number two, coding. Although uncommon, you might encounter one or two coding questions in your interviews. Some EM candidates get none, but here's the deal. Your interviewer still wants to make sure your tech skills are top-notch to handle and lead your team efficiently. So take it as an opportunity to prove that you can write code that's not just accurate, but also free of bugs and runs smoothly. Now, coming on to the final round, number three, the behavioral interview. This one's comprehensive. Since you're interviewing for a management position, it will cover everything from leadership, people management, past projects, to culture and team fit. I have three tips for this round. Number one, they're going to throw some typical behavioural questions your way like, tell me about a tough project you managed, or have you ever disagreed with a manager? They'll dive deeper into what you did and why you did it you're also likely to be asked questions around how your previous work aligns to your career and whether you embody a growth mindset. You need to show that you're adept at tackling challenges head on, that you keep pushing through hiccups and even learn a thing or two from criticism and failure. Number two, people management questions can get tricky. They will have you talking about times you messed up, talking about failures, or for instance, recount a time where you had hurt someone's feelings over a team's interest. So this means questions like, how did you handle an underperforming employee? Or tell us about a time where you failed to get a deserving employee promoted. To tackle these, you need to at least have a couple of stories up your sleeve that highlight your people management skills. We're talking real life stuff, like how you mentor, build teams, how you lead by demonstrating empathy, learning from mistakes, and essentially navigate team dynamics and complexities of growing, developing, and supporting individuals in your team or organization. Number three, which brings me on to my final tip, prepare right. Lots of candidates stumble in a Microsoft interview because they're not quite ready for the behavioural part. Your interviewers want to see that you learned from these exercises, not just successfully dealt with them. So a bit of professional help in this scenario can go a long way. We're a mock interviews platform, so we have a biased take on this, but honestly, this isn't something you want to go into unprepared for. Since these interviews have a habit of going down tangents you can't anticipate beforehand, and it's less the content part of the practice and more the mindset that practicing with coaches can help you get into, that's the most valuable part of working with a coach. Prepfully has excellent Microsoft engineering managers who provide one-to-one -one interview coaching. Book a slot with them in the link in the description box. Now that brings us to number four and final as appropriate interview. So pretty straightforward, also called the AA or the ASAPP interview. You make it to this round only if you succeeded in the last three. You either speak with a senior executive or HR who has two goals. One, to ensure nothing was overlooked in your assessment, and second, to make sure that you accept the offer. Right, that's all for this guide then. Lots of additional resources in the description below. Don't forget to check them out. Thanks and good luck. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe. Our website is prepfully.com. We've got lots of interview questions there. You can also schedule a mock interview with one of our experts. You can find the link in the description below. All the best from us at Prepfully, and we hope you totally rock your interview.